Hello, welcome to St. Michael's Monastery, home of the New Warrior Ministries. I am Bishop William. Welcome to video six of the series, Who is Jesus the Christ? Now again, I want to remind you that we answered that question, Who is Jesus the Christ? Right back in the first video. You can read it for yourself in the first chapter of the Gospel of John pretty clear he spells out who Jesus the Christ is so we continued from there on what it meant to or how you should enter the church the things that were necessary the catechism again so to speak of entering the church now we have gone through 10 chapters of a first century paper of Christianity called the Didache and it expresses very simple terms all of the things necessary to become a member of the church and then what to do once you're a member so that's where we're at today video number six we are in the church so we're going to continue now we closed out video five speaking of the Eucharist now every topic that has been brought up in its most basic understanding in this series will come up again in later videos each one having its own separate video explaining the topics in more depth right now this is just basic understanding so we left speaking of the Eucharist or Holy Communion and stated that it was indeed the body and blood of Christ now we we get a lot of questions from people why do you not allow anyone who is coming to worship partake of this that we touched on it in the last video so I want to without expanding too much I just want to say that we do and believe all of Catholicism I don't care who you are Roman Eastern Orthodox is it's Russian Greek Ukrainian doesn't matter Coptic doesn't matter all of Catholicism recognizes the body and the blood of Christ if you don't then you can't participate because it's stated pretty clearly do not allow anyone who doesn't believe to participate why is that well it's to save you for one if you do not believe and yet you participate in this you're taking it to your own death no one in Catholicism, no bishop, priest, deacon, no one in the world of Catholicism is going to allow that. Nobody wants you to die because you are partaking of the body and blood without having a true belief. That's Not only would that cause you to be sick and die as the scriptures themselves state, it will also come down on us for allowing it so it can't be it protects the integrity of the body and blood and it protects your life your soul until you come to this understanding so I just wanted to bring that up before we continue so now we're into chapter 11 of this Didache we're in the church and we're going to speak of in this chapter on what to do with preachers traveling priests, prophets, whatever you want to call them, elders, because everybody seems to have their own special word to separate themselves from everybody else. And if you haven't figured it out by now, or if you've never seen any of my other videos or read any of my blogs, then you don't understand what I'm about. And what I'm about is Christian unity. The body of Christ needs to be one. This was Christ's prayer himself. We need to be one. However, we cannot be one in the communion unless all those who are participating believe it is the true body and blood of Christ. Spiritual food, body and blood. If you don't believe this, you can't participate. Now, are there those who are closed communion that whether or not you believe this or not, it doesn't matter, you're not going to participate with them because you're not a member of their uh, special group? Of course there are those that exist so if you come from one church 
and you believe this, but you go to another church who also believes this and they're having communion doesn't necessarily mean they're going to let you participate. Everyone has their own little sets of rules. But that is the basic rule. So now, continuing with chapter 11 of the Didache, what to do with these traveling prophets, preachers, uh, pastors, ministers of the word. Here we go. Whosoever therefore shall come and teach you all these things aforesaid, him do you receive. What are all these things aforesaid? The first ten chapters of this Didache, this paper that was produced in the first century. If someone comes preaching these things, then receive him. But if the teacher himself turn and teach another doctrine with a view to subvert you, to change you from what is preached already, hearken not to him. But if he come to add to your righteousness and the knowledge of the Lord, receive him as the Lord. Right? You got that? Receive him as the Lord. It's really pretty simple. It's spelled out. This is first century. I'm going to remind everyone again. This is first century. First century paper. This was before a Bible existed. You need to understand uh, how the church was established and how it operated in the first century. Many people out there, many groups call themselves uh, first century or primitive or back to the uh, original church or foundations, whatever they want to call it. And they have no understanding of any of this that I'm telling you. None. So they're not really back to basics. They're not really back to first century. They're not back to a primitive church. The primitive church wasn't primitive as, it, as you believe that it is. So, I'm giving you the primitive church. It's up to you to accept it. This is how it was. Plain and simple. I don't make it up. Catholicism didn't make it up. This is first century paperwork. Okay, enough of that. I digress. I'll say this one again. But if the teacher himself turn and teach another doctrine with a view to subvert you, hearken not to him. But if he come to add to your righteousness and the knowledge of the Lord... Receive him as the Lord. But concerning the apostles and prophets, thus do you according to the doctrine of the gospel. Let every apostle who comes unto you be received as the Lord. He will remain one day, and if necessary, a second. But if he remain three days, he is a false prophet. <laughs> Imagine that. Why would they say something like that? A lot of people like to travel around and make money and be free, get free food, living off of the Christian communities and not really being true prophets. They were sellers of the word. Continuing, chapter 11, verse 6, And let the apostles, when departing, Take nothing but bread until he arrive at his resting place. But if he ask for money, he is a false prophet. <laughs> First century teaching. You can write to me and tell me anything you want. You can be as nasty as you want. Believe me, I've heard it. I've probably heard it all. I'm not sure. I'm sure I can be surprised at times. First century teaching, folks. This is the Didache, first century teaching. I'm going to say it a thousand times. It's not fabricated by me, my monastery, my church, or anyone in Catholicism of any sort. I'm going to say that one again. And let the apostle, when departing, take nothing but bread until he arrive at his resting place. But if he asks for money, he is a false prophet. And you shall not tempt or dispute with any prophet who speaks in the Spirit. For every sin shall be forgiven, but this sin shall not be forgiven. <laughs> I, 
This is a problem I have with many, many people. I get a lot of people writing to me about a lot of things. When you attack the church teaching that has been in existence for centuries and now claim that it is evil, you are calling the Word of God demonic. You are on the border of the unforgivable sin. This is the way it is. This is what was taught. It's in your scriptures. Once the Bible was put together, you can read it in there. If you read your Bible like you claim, many people claim to read it, and they keep attacking other books, calling them demonic. Whatever they want to call them, it doesn't really matter. I'm telling you right now. Be careful of your words. Be very, very careful. You will be judged. I will be judged. Everyone's going to be judged by the words that we speak today in the flesh. They will condemn you or condemn you. And you need to understand that. I'm telling you. You just you cannot just voice your opinion about everything on the planet regarding Jesus Christ and the church. Because you're going to answer for them. Think before you speak. And just because one group says something is true, you better investigate it. Thoroughly investigate it. Thoroughly investigate it. I can't. I cannot emphasize this enough. Pay attention and watch what you say and be careful. Make sure of what you're saying before you say it. And you shall not tempt or dispute with any prophet who speaks in the spirit. For every sin shall be forgiven, but this sin shall not be forgiven. If you call something from God the Holy, and the Holy Spirit as being from Satan, <laughs> you may not be forgiven. But not everyone who speaks in the Spirit is a prophet. But he who is so, who has the disposition of the Lord, by their dispositions they therefore shall be known, the false prophet and the prophet. So just because someone claims to be speaking in the Spirit doesn't mean he really is. What is this person like? What is his disposition? How does he act? Is there love in this person? See, love comes from God. This is, you got to pay attention. Just because somebody's yapping, 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 it sounds good to you, it doesn't mean that they're really from the Holy Spirit. And every prophet who orders in the Spirit that a table shall be laid shall not eat of it himself. But if he do otherwise, he is a false prophet. <laughs> okay, this is chapter 11, verse 9. We have absolutely no clue what this means. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm reading this to you, and this particular verse, every prophet who orders in the spirit that a table shall be laid. We really don't know what that is. Shall not eat of it. He orders a table to be laid, but he can't eat of it. So, is he ordering food for the people? We, we don't really know. There's a spiritual aspect to everything also, not just carnal, not just flesh, not just not just an apple, you know, there's spiritual food involved also. So we don't really know what he's talking about here. And every prophet who teaches the truth, if he does not, what he teaches is a false prophet. Again, what did I say earlier? Pay attention and investigate the words coming out of somebody's mouth and what he does over here if they're different he's a false prophet you need to know you need to understand and I don't care how much you admire someone I do not care how much you admire someone if he lies in one area intentionally makes up a lie he is a false prophet. I don't care how much truth he has already uttered or what you believe to be true. If he makes one lie, he's a liar. If it is a lie, if it's untruth, and you bring it to him and he says, oh, thank you, after he studies to see, well, okay, you're right. I was wrong. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't lying. I, I, I really believe that. Because we all make mistakes. 
if you what do the scriptures tell us you go to him privately and if he won't listen to you you bring in others and if he won't listen to them you take them before the church you see if he sees the mistake then it was actually an error on his part we all have error in us I don't care who you are but if he lies and won't admit to it and gets angry whatever he does he's a false prophet and you've got to stop listening to him I don't care how much truth he has anywhere else you've got to stop listening to him it's that simple So let me say that one again. Verse 10 of chapter 11. And every prophet who teaches the truth, if he does not, what he teaches is a false prophet. Verse 11. And every prophet who is approved and true and ministering in the visible mystery of the church, but who teaches not others to do the things that he does himself, shall not be judged of you. For with God lies his judgment. For in this manner also did the ancient prophets. So, I'm going to say that again. But who teaches not others to do the things that he does himself? So a prophet is doing something, but he's not teaching you how to do it. Or why? Well, you can't judge him for that. He's not lying to you. God will judge him. If God has determined that it is something he should be teaching, then he should be teaching it. And if he's not, God will judge him for that. That's omission. So... You're not to judge him. I'm not to judge him. We're not to judge people for what they don't do. We're to judge or discern what it is they do. But whoever shall say in the spirit, give me money or things of that kind, listen not to him. But if he tell you concerning others that are in need that you should give unto them, let no one judge him. So why are we asking for money? We're asking for money because we see somebody who needs help. These people need food. These people need money. These people need clothing. These people need help. We That's, that's our job. When we say, you give me your money because I need some money, <laughs> that's not my job. We are to provide our own way. You'll see that as we come up. I'm, I'm getting ahead now. <laughs> We're going to go into chapter 12, and then we're going to end this. Chapter 12, verse 1. Oh, let me go back to 11, verse 12. But whoever shall say in the Spirit, Give me money, or things of that kind, listen not to him. But if he tell you concerning others that are in need, that you should give unto them, let no one judge them. How many <laughs> people, how many so-called evangelists, and teachers and prophets fall into this category. There are people out there who ask money for jets. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. It's not because I'm saying it. I'm simply reading a Christian document from the first century. It's not my words. So you don't have to listen to me. Listen to the spirit of the word. Okay? Chapter 12. Let everyone that comes in the name of the Lord be received, but afterwards you shall examine him and know his character. You have knowledge both of good and evil. You have knowledge of good and evil. And you can determine their character by watching and observing them and studying them. If the person who comes be a wary, if the person who comes be a wayfarer, assist him so far as you are able. But he will not remain with you more than two or three days unless there be a necessity. Okay, understand that. But if he wish to settle with you, because now we're going to change it just a touch. Go we'll put a new twist on it. But if he wish to settle with you, being a craftsman, let him work and so eat. Okay? If he wish to settle with you, being a craftsman, let him work and so eat. But if he know not any craft, provide you according to your own discretion that a Christian may not live idle among you. Do we, are we understanding these words? This is before the Bible existed, okay? 
This was the teaching of the first century church. I know I said it, and I'm going to keep saying it forever. If he know not any craft, provide you according to your own discretion, that a Christian may not live idle among you. But if he be not willing to do so, he is a trafficker in Christ. From that, keep aloof. <laughs> but if he be not willing to do so, he is a trafficker in Christ. From such, keep aloof. Trafficker in Christ. All right. So let me just do chapter 13 because we're going to add to that a little bit. And then I will end it. I'm going to make this video a little bit longer. Chapter 13, because it's, it's on this same line of, of uh, keeping prophets with you and them being paid. So I don't want to leave you um, halfway. <laughs> Chapter 13, but every true prophet who is willing to dwell among you is worthy of his meat. Every true prophet, true prophet, you've examined him, you've watched his life, you've given him work, because he wants to stay and you want him to be there because you like what he's saying so he's doing something cleaning your house it doesn't matter what it is there's nothing beneath the prophet a true prophet so you're studying him and you see his actions and his life so now you know he's a true prophet but every true prophet who is willing to dwell among you is worthy of his meat now you know he's a true prophet now he's worthy of his meat Likewise, a true teacher is himself worthy of his meat, even as a laborer. You shall therefore take the first fruits of every produce of the wine press and threshing floor, of oxen and sheep, and shall give it to the prophets, for they are your chief priests. But if you have not a prophet, give it unto the poor. If you make a feast, take and give the first fruits according to the commandment in like manner when you open a jar of wine or oil take the first fruits and give it to the prophets take also the first fruits of money of clothes and of every possession as it shall seem good unto you take also the first fruits of clothes of every possession as it shall seem good unto you not because someone's demanded it you don't owe them. You do what you can do and give according to the commandment, the first fruits, as it shall seem good unto you. Now, should pastors be paid for preaching? Yes, according to chapter 13, once you have seen that he is indeed a true prophet, not simply because he says so, you have to examine his life. If he all, is he all about the riches and the money? He's not a true prophet. <laughs> He's not. We just saw that. He's a trafficker in Christ. Once you see that he's a true prophet, he is indeed worthy of his meat. Chapter 13 of the Didache. Okay? And I'm going to close with that. I didn't want you to leave you with a halfway understanding of pastors should not be paid. We have to know that they're true first and worthy. Then they can stay and you can take care of them and they should be taken care of because they're giving you the truth, the word of Christ in spirit and they're guiding you as a shepherd. So I hope you take what I'm saying to you to heart. Um, we'll see you next time. We'll start with chapter 14. There's 16 chapters in the Didache. We have three more to go. Take care. God bless in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.